to the one that can make your next chapter your best chapter. Hallelujah. How can it be? Welcome to Wawana Presents Monday Night Chats for Moms and Mentors of Teen Girls. I am particularly passionate about tonight's topic because as a mom and aunt and mentor of multiple teen girls, this topic is so, so real. It is protecting her mind and helping her going on during the teen years. But there are definitely some things that we can key on as mothers and mentors and community members and supporters of these teen girls. So I want to jump right in and get to that for you. Again, if you are just now tuning in, I am the personality, Wywana Montgomery, behind Wywana Speaks, giving you another Monday night chat for moms and mentors of teen girls. I am also the author of Bold, Brave, and Courageous, a No Fear Success Guide for Teen Girls, the creator of the No Fear Ladies Conference for Women and Teen Girls, as well as a Clarity Strategist. So you'll hear more about that on Thursday nights when I'm talking to the big girls. So protecting her mind. We see it on TV. We hear all the stats. Some of us even have friends, neighbors, coworkers who have dealt with teen girls even trying to take their lives because there's just so much going on. So I'm going to give you all three practical points to help you protect her mind. And after that, I'm going to share a little bit about three of the most common diagnoses that teen girls receive. So you can also learn to pay attention and find out, you know, is the girl in your life just going through the basic ups and downs of being a teenage girl? Or is there something more serious? Hello, Don. Is there something more serious going on that you need to check into? Number one, you need to watch what she consumes. And this time I'm not talking about food. I'm talking about social media. I'm talking about television and movies. I'm even talking about friends. Is her friend circle feeding negativity? So starting with social media, that can do a lot to the mental well-being and the psyche of a teen girl because a lot of it is based on photos, right? So they're posting photos, they're posting comments, and like their little heart is hanging on a string to see if they get a like. And it can be absolutely devastating to a young girl if she's trying to keep up with the Joneses and her person, her favorite celebrities and other influencers, influencers, and she's putting up photos and maybe no one's liking it, or she's putting them negatively instead. There's also a lot going on with social media that you don't understand. She's looking at pictures, thinking that everyone else is perfect and more beautiful than her, and she has no idea that they took that photo five or six times with special lighting, trying to get that quote unquote perfect image. You may notice that I'm coming to you a bit more clear right now. That's because I invested in a light ring, which you need if you're doing something like I am. But be careful because social media can be damaging. You have to understand, you help your daughter and the teen girls in your life understand to put barriers up. It is fun to scroll through social media, check out what everyone's doing, But don't let it be a barometer for her beauty and her self-worth and her value. You have to view it as entertainment and not start judging yourself according to social media likes. You know, that's something that they have to understand. And that comes with maturity. And a teen girl doesn't necessarily have those. I'm preaching to the choir on this by now. TV shows have the same effect. What is the subject matter? What is it talking about? Is it making your teen girl feel like there's this impossible standard that she has to live up to, that she needs a certain body, that she needs a certain look, that she needs certain clothes, that she needs certain friends, that your family needs a certain amount of money? 
be careful of the imagery that is being posted in front of your teen girl when she's watching TV and she's looking at movies. I'm trying to tell you, young people have a more difficult time simply because their brain is not mature yet. And it's not just teenagers. I say young women, the brain doesn't actually quit maturing until about 21. So they have a hard time to be very careful about what's consumed in social media, TVs, and movies. Now, this other one, oh my goodness, I have had tons and tons of conversations with my daughter about this. Friends. And I don't mean, you know, the friends are necessarily always being rude to her. But here's something that young people don't understand. They think it has to do with loyalty. You know, my daughter would come home from school and she's a rising ninth grader. So she's been in middle school to this point. And she would come home and be all upset because friend A told her that friend B was talking mess about her. Or any friend told her that somebody else, random, was talking about her. And I heard it in first period and she said this and she said that. Here's the thing that I had to break down and understand and explain it, make sure my daughter understood it. Girls, you know, we kind of have this pack mentality. Even when we get older, we have our clique, we have our crew, and that can be positive. But some of the negative that sometimes comes out of that is a friend thinks that in order to be loyal to you, if a rumor is going around about you or she heard something negative about you, that she needs to tell you. And trust me, I had to have this conversation more than once with my daughter for her to really understand it. But I finally got her to understand there is no reason why your friend needs to come to you and share with you something negative that she heard or overheard that somebody said about you. That's not making you feel good, right? Is that making you feel good to hear something negative? Now, if there was a threat against your life, well, you might need to know it and then you can report, report to school officials, something like that. But other than that, what is the purpose of a friend? Sometimes I question, I'm like, are you sure that's a friend or is that person wanting you to feel bad? What is the purpose of a friend coming to tell you something negative that someone said about you? It's only going to hurt your feelings. It's only going to make you upset. And it might make you feel like fighting. And obviously, you don't need to be fighting. So it took quite a few conversations for me to get her to understand as someone who's now 13 and, you know, in sixth grade, she was only 11, all these middle school years to understand, let your friends know. I don't care what you hear that's negative. I don't want to know it. I don't want to know it because there's no reason. Again, unless it's a threat to your personal safety and your back, that only hurts your feelings and makes you upset and sets you up to then be all riled up and getting in some type of fight that you don't need to be into. Hello, Charlene. Hello, Sherry. Hello, Don. Luane, thank you all for tuning in. So it, but it took a lot for me to really get her to understand that because they think that's loyalty. And that is so unhealthy. There's absolutely no reason for a friend of yours to report negativity. And I told her, just start up front, let your friends know. I don't want to know anything negative that you have heard said about me. And don't feel like you need to bring it to me because it's basically just bringing me garbage, negative garbage that's going to make me upset. Someone just said, yeah, negative associations and rumors. Absolutely. That does a lot to damage her mindset. So just imagine if your best friend keeps bringing you all this negativity she was hearing from one of your haters, you know, and they're all going to have them. All that does, you're distracted in class. You're upset. You're potentially thinking uh, lower of yourself than you ought to because you think, well, man, if that's what they think about me, maybe it's true. There is never a reason for your teenage daughter to sit and the teenage girls you mentor, your nieces, your neighbors, whoever, your cousin, to sit in, sit up and take in negative information. So watch what she consumes, y'all. That's my first point. So in, negative things out. The more negative things you take in, it just starts to fester and it has a ma takes a major toll on their mental well-being. Remember, this is May, Mental Wellness Month. So everything I'm talking about, I am aiming it on helping you with the mental wellness of your teen girl. The second thing, this is absolutely important. Moms, mentors, teachers, be careful what you say to her. 
You can give her constructive feedback because she needs it, but you absolutely must be careful how you say it. You know, I'm guilty because I'm a person that, you know, I was an advanced student. I caught on to things very quickly. Certain subjects, I could practically forget there was a test and just roll up and get an A. Not math, I had to study, but I, I could just roll up and get an A. But because of that, I have to be careful when I am trying to help my teen daughter, my niece, or my son with schoolwork or something else. I have to be careful because I am capable of having a sarcastic tone. It is not healthy for me to have a sarcastic tone with, well, what do you mean you don't get it? What is there not to get? You know, those are things, and I had, I've had to apologize before because my daughter was asking for help. And because to me, understanding or whatever seemed obvious, and maybe I was just, you know, short of patience, uh, distracted, trying to do something else, just, hey, what do you mean you don't get it? You need to be careful how you speak to her because if you are in, because you're important in her life as her mother or her mentor or her teacher or her aunt or her grandmother, you can say one word today that will scar her for life. All through adulthood, she can still be walking around with those biting words that you said in her head, and it causes her to question her ability. You know, that's just dumb, or that's just stupid. Or what do you mean you don't get it? Or I don't understand why you be careful. Because again, you have a high place in her life. You have a strong relationship with her. So she values what you say. So if you say something to her the wrong way, it is very, very damaging. So not only watch your words for point two, but watch how you say it. Watch your tone. And it could be simple things like there are girls who are sensitive about their body. So there you might have a teenage girl who maybe is considered underweight and it could be a good thing that she's gained a few pounds. But you better not go up to her and say, mm, man, you're putting on a little weight, getting thick. The way she hears that, I'm too fat. I better stop eating. I even know teenage males who responded that way when a grandparent told them they were putting on weight. You have to watch your words. Be so careful about what you are saying to her because you don't want to damage her psyche and have her take something the wrong way and then walk around and all, all of a sudden has built a low self-esteem because of what you said to her and how you said it. Your words can be biting. You must be careful. She loves you. She values your words. I can't stress that enough. So if you're just tuning in, point one was watch what your teen girl consumes that meaning social media, TV, movies, and from her friends. Point two is watch your words. Watch what you say to her and watch your tone. Point three, I keep saying they're all important, but this is super duper important. This is another place where moms and mentors, we can get in a trap and, and handle this all wrong. Understand that when you are sitting down and you're having a heart to heart conversation with your teenage girl, her perception is her reality. Let me say that for you again. Her perception is her reality. So if your daughter or your niece or whoever sits down and they're really confiding in you and they share something and the first thing you say is, well, that's not really true. Or that's not really going on. That's You're misunderstanding it. That's not a big deal. Understand what I'm saying. Do you understand the words coming out of my mouth? Her perception is her reality. So it is mentally damaging and emotionally damaging if you dismiss what she's saying. I have it in my notes. I need you to really listen and don't dismiss her. Again, remember in our adult mind, if you forget what it was like to be her age, because you are now more mature, it might feel like a little bit of nothing. But for her and for you when you were her age, it is a really big deal. You need to give it validity. You need to listen. Her perception is her reality. So she, if she is expressing something to you and it's very emotional to her, okay, you can ask more questions and try to get to the bottom of why she feels that way. When does she start feeling that way? Does she feel that way all the time? Or are there certain moments where it kind of, it, it, it comes, you know, it's more at a heightened level for her. 
But please don't dismiss what she's saying. That's the kind of thing that draws teens and anybody to suicide. A lot of the time they want to be heard. They want to know that their thoughts and their feelings are validated. When you don't feel like your thoughts and feelings are validated, you feel like you are less valuable. A very dangerous space to be in for a teenage girl. Listen to her. Please don't dismiss what she's saying. Also help her get to the root of that. Again, her perception is her reality. So that's why you need to help her get to the root of those emotions. If it turns out that legitimately, well, I started feeling this way because I heard that so-and-so said this, and then it's, it turns out that so-and-so didn't say that. Well, now it is a reality, but you're able to get to the bottom and help her investigate and understand that. But you've got to help her get to the core of emotions. Well, what happened that made you start feeling this way? How long have you felt this way? You're now helping her process through this perception that, again, right now is her reality. Whether you think it's real or not, right now it's her reality. So it's important that you help her process through it. Also, sometimes you need to actually let her experience the emotion and go through it. It's like a grief process. You know, it doesn't help you first have lost a job or somebody died and the first thing somebody tells you is stop crying. That's absolutely ridiculous. Once you get over the shock, of what just happened, usually the next emotion, the next reaction in the step is to cry. So you need to let her actually experience the emotion. Don't tell her to suck it up. Now she needs to experience it in a healthy way. Don't let her cut herself to experience the emotion. But if she needs to lay on her bed and cry it out for a little bit, don't go in there and get upset at her because she's crying. If she needs to shut the door and scream and just let it all out, let her do that. If she needs to talk to you and there's just no words, she just overwhelmed, there are no words. Maybe she doesn't need you trying to give her a solution right now. She just needs you to hold her or just sit there next to her and know that you are there. Let her experience the emotion that she is feeling. That is part of the process to get her on the other side. You have to let her experience the emotion. Again, it might be crying. It might be journaling. I mean, tell her to write it down. And then if she is journaling, don't be judging what she's saying. That's not your business in this moment. Let her get it out on paper. Trust me, her writing it on paper is much better than her hurting herself. So let your teen girl experience the emotion, all the stages that are necessary. She might cry, she might scream, she might just need to be quiet for a while. She might need some time by herself. She might wanna write it down. You know, it's important and it's healthy to let her experience it as long as she's not like cutting or doing something unhealthy as she's going through it. And that might be counseling. I'm gonna to speak to my black people who are on this live. We have this thing in our culture that is absolutely unhealthy. Part of protecting your teen girl's mind may be that she needs counseling. That doesn't make you crazy. That doesn't make, that's not putting your business in the street. That is a safe, neutral space, a trusted adult for her to talk to, and it's her business. Again, every person in my family has seen a counselor at some point, and I let them know. I let the kids know. If you are seeing a counselor, Whatever you are telling the counselor is your business between you and them. Don't be asking them what they talked about. That is their safe space. If the counselor feels that you need to know it because it, they, they're threatening themselves or your life or somebody else's life, they'll let you know. But Black people in any other culture watching this live where we have this hang up about counseling, that is why many of us are wounded even in adulthood. It's not putting your business in the street. It's not putting the family business in the street. It is allowing your teen girl to have a safe space to voice her opinions, voice her emotions, voice her thoughts, and not be judged with a safe, trusted adult with some training to give her healthy coping skills. 
And again, that is not your business to ask her what she talked about. It is your goal to get her there and let her get it out so that you can have a healthier young lady on your hands. I'm going to go through the three points again, and then I want to share with you, parents and mentors, so that you can know. Three of the most common, if, if it is like if we're talking about protecting her mind, not every young lady who experienced, you know, a, a little kind of breakdown or emotional outburst, not everyone has a mental illness or a mental health issue. It's just some of these things are just a part of life. Mood swings, normal. But if she's having just like this, you know, sadness going on for two weeks and longer, that's called depression. So I'm going to go back through the three points, and then I want to share with you the three most common mental health diagnoses when it comes to teens. So my first point in helping you protect her mind and help her manage her emotions is to watch what she consumes. Don't let her sit up on social media all day long and start playing the comparison game and getting upset and feeling like she's not pretty enough and stressed out about not getting enough likes. Be careful what she's taking in from social media from TVs and movies that are also giving the wrong message and not just mental health, um, TVs and movies might, in other ways, it might not be good for her mind. She doesn't need to sit up and, and consume a whole bunch of sexual things and have her start being overly sexual in her mind and in, in her actions as a teenage girl. So there's a lot of reasons why you need to be careful about TV and movies. And then be careful what she's consuming as far as relationships and conversations with her friends. Again, Teach your daughter that her best friend does not need to bring her negative news that somebody shared. I told my daughter, let your friend know. You don't need them to pass it to you if they heard somebody call you out your name or say something. What's the point of that? All that does is make you angry, make you upset. You're mad. Now you might feel like fighting. Their friend thinks it's loyalty. And that's a common misconception that teenage girls have. They think they don't have your back if they don't tell you what people are saying. But let them know, hey, you have my back even more if you don't share negative things with you because I don't need negativity in my life. I only need to hear what's good. So those are my three points. And now I want to share with you guys, this is some information that came from PennMedicine.org, as in University of Penn. These are the most common mental illnesses that you will find in teens. So again, I'm not, oh, you know what? I forgot. I just realized I didn't go to the rest of the points. I got all excited on point one again. The three points in summary are watch what she consumes via social media, TV and movies and from her friends. Point number two, be careful of what you say to her and how you say it, because you can say something in the wrong tone today that injures her for a lifetime because she keeps holding on to it because you're so important to her. And she takes every word that you say very seriously. The third point is to understand that her perception is her reality. So don't sweep it under the rug and dismiss and not deal with and not have a conversation about what she is sharing with you. You need to listen. She doesn't necessarily need a solution right up front, but you need to listen and like really listen to what she's saying. Listen to her, help her understand the root of those emotions, those feelings about what she's sharing with you and then actually let her go through the stages of that emotion. So she might need to cry. She might, might need to close the door and scream. She might just need you to be there with her and hold her and not say anything. Maybe she doesn't need solutions right away. Are you trying to offer solutions? She just needs you to be there. She might need counseling. Whatever it is, let her experience the emotion because waves of emotion are the same as a grief process. You feel it one way first, you're shocked, then you might need to cry, and then you begin to think over it some more, and then you're finally able to process it in a way where you can move on. So these are, I want you parents and mentors to be aware if what your daughter is experiencing or your mentee is experiencing is a bit more than just the typical ups and downs of the teenage girl. Her being moody, uh, particularly during her cycle, her being moody, mood swings up and down, that's normal having a bad day. Maybe she didn't get enough sleep. Maybe somebody did say something she didn't appreciate. That's normal. Hormonal changes, all of that's normal if you're just a little bit of up and down. But I do need you to understand the three most common mental illnesses so you can be watchful in case there is something more serious going on. So the first one is generalized anxiety. And if you want to look this up, this came from pennmedicine.org, P-E-N-N, -N, as in University of Penn. 
uh, from April 11, 2018. Generalized anxiety. And that's defined as excessive worry about everyday matters. So if you have a daughter who's just kind of anxious about everything, you know, her routine has changed. Do I look right today? You know, oh, do I do I look fat? Am I too skinny? Oh my gosh, I wonder what my friends are doing. You know, if, if she just has too much anxiety about basic things, things that should not make you anxious, you might want to look into that. The second one is social phobia. And that is defined as severe feelings of self-consciousness and insecurity in social settings. So if you have a teen girl in your life who refuses to go to anybody's birthday party, their graduation party, they're nervous at a family reunion, you know, even just walking around in the mall, anything social like that, she's like overwhelmingly nervous and, and just afraid to go out. That's the social phobia, that's the second one you might need to get some help for that because it should not create, she shouldn't be self-conscious and insecure just about being out in public. So you want to pay attention to that. Not just like one day, oh my gosh, I'm having a bad hair day. But if every time you try to take her out in public to the mall, you're shopping, you're eating at the restaurant, or every time people are inviting her to Sweet Sixteens and quinceañeras and graduation parties and she doesn't even want to go to the family reunion or you you go to the family reunion and she just wants to stay in the hotel room all day while all these activities are going on, you need to check into that. That's called social phobia. The third common mental illness diagnosis amongst teenagers is depression. And that is the per persistent feelings of sadness, anxiety, and or emptiness. I'm gonna say that again. The third one is depression. And that's defined as persistent feelings of sadness, anxiety, and emptiness. So again, don't be alarmed if you're the teen girl is just going through a temporary stage, you know, particularly if it is doing her menstrual cycle. She might feel kind of blah, kind of down that whole time, or just various times of the month when our hormones are going up and down. You know, something just happened. She broke up with her boyfriend. Yeah, it's natural that she might cry and be upset for a couple of days or a week or what have you. But if you are noticing that she is devastated and the feelings of sadness and emptiness and anxiety about any kind of situation are lasting like two weeks or longer, that may be a more serious problem that you really need to look into. And I'm telling you, it's better to be overcautious than to leave your daughter or young lady you're mentoring or any other young lady in your life in this state of depression for a prolonged period. And next thing you know, you are finding her because she has harmed herself. I had a friend just tell me that someone they know had a 14 year old daughter who just tried to commit suicide. And you might think they don't know how, they don't know what to do. You can find everything on the internet. So if you have someone in the wrong state of mind, they're feeling down, they're feeling low, all they have to do is Google it. I'm not even gonna share because I don't want anything coming out of my mouth that's giving any ideas, but literally you can find anything. Just the way that terrorists can find instructions online about how to build a mom, you can find instructions on how to end your life. And that's real. So I'll, I'm gonna go through those three most common mental illness diagnoses that are common in teenagers. Generalized anxiety, which is defined as excessive worry about everyday matters. The second one is social phobias, which is defined as severe feelings of self-consciousness and insecurity in social settings. The third one is depression, persistent feelings of sadness, anxiety, and or emptiness. I am hoping that this evening you guys heard a lot of nuggets that can help you out. As far as what to do moving past here, be sure to check in constantly with your teen girl. They're experiencing this quarantine many different ways. If she's a senior, she's lost a lot of things. For all students, school just ended. Like there was no closure, it just ended. So they are going through a roller coaster of all kinds of emotions. Um, I do provide group mentoring through my nonprofit Reach Forward Foundation. You can find us online. The easiest way is to look at find our Facebook page. 
Reach Forward Foundation, and you'll find the website from there. Um, if you want to speak with me one-on-one -on -one about some concerns that you have for your daughter, you can go to my website. It's in the description, wawana.com. Go to the contact page and just book, and we can, we can put some time together to do that. Thank you so much, Don. Thank you, Kevin. Thank you, Matt. Um, if you are just thinking, okay, I, I really need to spend some time with her, and you want to get some reading to kind of get her self-esteem up, again, I'm going to do another quick commercial. This is my book, Bold, Brave, and Courageous, A No Fear Success Guide for Teen Girls. It is kind of self-help for the teen girl that helps them get through various things. Uh, one, of the, one of the themes is never let anyone tell you what you cannot do and open your mind to the possibility of your greatness and fight for what you want. That teaches that resiliency that's necessary. So if you have been listening to this tonight and there are some things you need to change in your communication with her, in the habits that you have allowed her to form with social media, we've been on quarantine. It's very easy to just let them veg out. You need to get them out of their phone. We're gonna play some family games in our house tonight because we need to. We have to make them read, turn that stuff off unplug yourself to be a good example. So if you have been listening and you feel like, my goodness, the girls in my life, my daughter, my niece, my cousin, my neighbor, this girl at church, there might be an issue, please run those three diagnoses by the folks that you need to speak with. If you're not the parent, please share this uh, to anyone who is the mother or the mentor of a teen girl, anyone who runs their own uh, teen girl leadership or mentorship program, teachers of middle and high school girls, church groups, this is so important, protecting her mind and managing her emotions. I'm excited to have joined you. Tune in Monday. Next week, we'll do it again for another Monday night chat for moms and mentors of teen girls. Next week's topic is protecting her heart. Protecting her heart. And I'm not just talking about with little romantic rom relationships she might have but even with her friends, just platonic friendships. So to wrap up Mental Wellness Month, which the month of May nationally has been designated as Mental Wellness Month, next month we're going to conclude the month of May with protecting her heart at gmail.com. That is W-Y-J-U-A-N-A info.com. Again, this is Wywana Montgomery, the personality behind Wywana Speaks, closing out another episode. Thank you so much for joining us. Have a great evening.